Yeah, very happy to be here today and present to you uh, how 3D printing can eventually change retail as we know it. Uh, I started working in 3D printing back in uh, 2009, when most people still thought 3D printers work with paper. Uh, a lot has changed uh, since then for the good. Um, and until 2013, I worked for 3D Systems, which is the uh, inventor of the 3D print technology. Um, and in that year, my colleague Brian and I, who you see in this picture, called in our managers and we told them we would be building our own dream uh, from then on. And that dream was 3D Hubs. Uh, surprisingly, a concept that didn't exist back then. Uh, an online platform connecting the world's 3D printers and letting everyone locally access them. So customers would upload their 3D design, choose a print location, and then locally pick up the product. So since we started, over 200,000 prints have been ordered on our platform. And this is the actual image of the first print being made and delivered. And surprisingly, it's not the tall guy who produced it, but actually the 14-year-old kid on the right uh, who got spoiled by his dad for Christmas, as you can see. Um, so he made that 3D print, and he did it three times cheaper and five times faster than if the customer would have bought it online. And the customer experience was also completely different, because when he came to pick up the product, he got a demonstration of the 3D printer and all the things that are made on it. So even though this was one small use case, it supported our idea that with a network of 3D printers, we can eventually change how products are being made and distributed. And in order to understand that better, it's good to look back how manufacturing has evolved over the last few centuries. So this is what manufacturing looked like about 200 years ago. Products were made by hand, which is not very scalable, and investors would probably not have backed this company. But what was really nice about it is that products were made close to the customer and only after they had placed an order. Then we got the industrial revolutions and assembly lines. And now, because of globalization and the endless quest for cheap labor, we've moved over most production to Asia. And the result is that we need large container ships to sail the world and bring these products to the customer. And doesn't feel very efficient. I recently heard that container ships emit more carbon emissions than all cars in the world combined. And today, most products are made in huge quantities before even one is sold. And an estimated 30% of these products have to be thrown away because nobody wanted to buy it. So 3D printing has been invented already in the 1980s. And not without reason, it's often called the third industrial revolution. Because 3D printing is a digital manufacturing technology, you can leverage all the benefits from digital distribution that has changed so many industries over the last few decades. With 3D printers, you can make millions of different products at the push of a button in any location in the world. So I believe this will lead to a future where most products are made local and on demand instead of far away and in large quantities. And with 3D hubs, we're accelerating that future by giving everyone local access to 3D printers. Today, we're providing over a billion people in the world with access to 3D printing within 10 miles of their home. And I recently found out they were active in more countries than McDonald's. So I guess by now, uh, you're wondering, what can I 3D print uh, besides these fake hamburgers? And today, most applications are industrial. So uh, the newest Airbus plane has over 1,000 titanium 3D printed parts in it. And Airbus uses 3D printing because they can save up to 55% weight up to tradi with traditional technologies. Um, so yeah, it's really, really unique. Then 3D printing is also applied on a large scale in the medical sector. Uh, Invisalign is a braces company and they 3D printed over 20 million braces with 3D printing. They used 3D printing for that last year. And each brace has to be unique, of course, and their 3D printing is the perfect technology. So today we're looking at a $4 billion industry, uh, but my expectation and also that of firms such as McKinsey is that in 10 years time, 10% of consumer products will be made with 3D printing. That's 10% of a $4 trillion manufacturing industry. So I'll show you a few examples of consumer products that are already, already being 3D printed today and which we developed when we were still working at 3D Systems. So we had a light shade collection and the layer-wise buildup of 3D printing allows you to create these kind of intricate shapes uh, that you cannot, be, cannot produce in any other way. 
we developed smartphone cases and Apple saw these and they liked them so much they decided to sell them in many of their stores worldwide. And my co-founder Brian developed these headphones that take your music playlist and then display your favorite artists in 3D. So this is an example of so-called mass customization enabled by 3D printing. So the examples I just showed are just the beginning. The 3D printing speed and material choice is about to drastically improve, which will also increase the range of consumer products that we can 3D print. Since recently, you can print wood-filled materials straight on your desktop. Metal 3D printing has been around for a few years and used by the industry, but since recently, you can also print metal products on a desktop 3D printer. And this machine developed at MIT can actually print plastic and metal at the same time, unlocking the opportunity to print electronics. And the slowness of 3D printing will also soon be a thing of the past, as the carbon 3D can print 50 times faster than existing machines. So this creates the opportunity to print the products directly in store. So can you imagine the experience for a customer if they can see a product being made directly in front of their eyes? But why would you use 3D printing in store? Because for the first time, it allows you as a retailer to get in control of the design and the manufacturing of the products that you sell, increasing your importance in the value chain and offering two key benefits. First benefit is that you have no more inventory. With 3D printing, products are made on demand, so only after a customer placed an order. So instead of physical stock, you now only have digital stock. An online repository with an almost unlimited number of designs that you can first sell, then produce. And the second key benefit is that you and the consumer can start customizing products. In this future, I see the retailer guiding the consumer in creating their own designs. Each product will become unique, such as this wedding cake topper that was based off a 3D scan of me and my wife when we got married last year. So I'll end with a few examples of how 3D printing is already being applied uh, in stores today. A great example is the earphone company Normal from New York. They've developed an app that can scan your ears and then automatically generates a design that exactly fits. These are then 3D printed and assembled in their retail location in Manhattan. Another example comes from DIY store chain Orchard. Uh, they've developed a customization display in store so people can create their, their own cabinet knob or door handle designs or even produce spare parts on demand. And this video shows how. When a user comes into the store, they have two options. One is you don't have anything with you, but you'd like to customize something. This is our Orchard Express print. I just was going to buy something that was already on the shelf. You can actually customize this for your home. People want to create things that they see in their head, be able to put it in some sort of digital format and turn it into something real. It's actually going to show you the height, the width, and the depth. You can use this slider. That's cool. If we wanted an Irish clover, we could put that in. To... Exactly. Another product I think many people would like to customize are shoes. Uh, Nike did a great job by allowing consumers to change the colors on their shoes. But if you take that concept and apply it into 3D, things start to become really interesting. And United Nude is a shoe brand that's already doing this. So they have a display in store, people can create their own designs, and then they're printed directly there. And you can even transfer this concept into the home. So if you have a party that night, you just print yourself a last minute pair. So with 3D Hubs, we've connected 3D print retailers, individuals, and large scale manufacturers from all around the world. In London alone, there are over 250 locations where you can get something made. So with one of them named Digits to Widgets, just before this event, I had these wired glasses made. Uh, this shows the creation of the digital design, which then forms the basis for the 3D printing. And here you see how the glasses are being unpacked from the printer. So I actually... Uh, I have a copy here for David, also one with your name. I'll hand them over later. So 
Yeah, so this customized product uh, was manufactured on demand. No warehouses were needed. Uh, it was made just a short bike ride from here. No container ships or trucks were involved. I truly believe that retailers can play a leading role in getting consumers as excited about this new age of manufacturing as me. Thank you. I don't know if our art director is going to allow this because I'm not sure it's exactly the right font. But. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the downside. Tell us what manufacturers, retailers can get wrong when they're using this new technology in suboptimal ways. Yeah, I mean, today the technology is still really advancing rapidly, so it's, it's, it's suitable for certain consumer product applications, but definitely not for all. Uh, it can be, uh, you know, the, 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 today the price can be too high or the, the finishing is not right. Um, also the fact that you cannot print yet in multiple materials uh, also limits the number of consumer products that you can make. So today most applications are industrial professional, but I truly believe that a future where products are made on demand and local makes a lot more sense uh, than making huge quantities in Asia, shipping all that stock around the world. And is, is this still relevant for a luxury retailer? Because luxury is all about scarcity. If you can print a button to copy and copy and copy, doesn't that defeat the purpose? Yeah, I think that's going to be a thing of the past, limited editions. That's, you know, people are going to interact with products in a whole new way. Um, everything's going to be on demand, available directly. You can produce it yourself, you can design it yourself. Everyone's going to be a manufacturer and a designer. Um, and yeah, that's true democratization, and that means that yeah, certain scarcity or exclusivity will, will disappear. Yeah. So you're providing access to printers in people's localities. Do you see these machines being ubiquitous in the home, just like a computer printer is today? Yeah, I think many people have a 3D printer at home. Uh, I think it will be used, uh, for example, to create toys. I think for children, it's a lot of fun to design and produce their own toys at home. I think it's very unlikely that all the products that we need daily will be printed at home. Um, and that's why we've created this international network of also industrial 3D printers, so you can get almost everything made. Bram, thank you for joining us thank you. and giving us the atom-based future.